Full screen navigations, we're going to cover the why and the when and also prototype this. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're going to be hopping into the world of UI UX design and this is going to be a two part video series where in the next couple days on Thursday or Wednesday, I'm going to be releasing the front end development portion of this. So we're going to be talking about full screen navigations. I see a lot of people get full screen navigations wrong, both in the UI department and mostly the UX department. A lot of people use full screen navigations unnecessarily. They actually have a smaller use case than you would think. So in this video, first, I'm going to discuss the when and the why of full screen navigations. And then we're going to hop into a prototyping software. I'm going to use Adobe XD. You can use whatever or whatever else you want, like Figma. And we're going to create our own I, full screen navigation prototype that animates and everything. And then in the next video in two days, I'm going to show you how to use GSAP and we're going to step into the world of front end development in order to make it a reality in the browser and it's also going to work on mobile devices as well. So let's get started. In a recent study by Design Week, 70% of the respondents said that their company is investing more in interactive prototyping. So this is definitely a skill that you should consider adding to your repertoire. The sponsor of today's video, Framer, is here to help you level up. Framer is an intuitive, no-code tool making it easy for anyone to start prototyping. Pre-made insertable components, easy to use interactive features, and smart custom animations do all the heavy lifting. You just have to put it all together. Once you're finished, send a link to your team, manager, or client to preview and blow them away with something you were able to put together in a matter of minutes. So sign up for free or get 20% off of any of the paid plans by going to framer.com forward slash design course. And that link is right here in the description. All right, so this is the second time I've recorded this tutorial. It froze uh, the first time and then the second time. So let's hope the third time's a charm. I always love just recording stuff over and over to waste my day. So we're gonna use Adobe XD here. You can use Figma if you wish. Web 1920 for desktop. We all also try to create a mobile version as well. Uh, and so instead of being boring and using a typical background, we're going to take our background color and go somewhere right around uh, here. Why isn't that updating? Okay, there we go. So you know, right, right around here at 7E00FC, OO as in 00. So we're just going to add that to our background swatches or our color swatches. Take the type tool. And we're just gonna say launch it. We're not gonna have like a full user interface because that would be just not worth it at all. Uh, unnecessary. We're gonna use Nunito. And we will increase the size. You're gonna notice I'm talking a little bit faster just because I did this a million times already. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, and then we're gonna take a background. We're gonna create like a pill background or a button rather. Um, and then we'll drag this down beneath it. We need to see the thing. So we need to take the opacity down quite a bit right there and then our pill container is now made. So we'll take these two, um, group them up to create our button. We're going to duplicate this artboard to now show what the interface looks like. We'll delete that uh, when we have the full screen on top. So we're gonna use a rectangle for this, get rid of the border. And instead of using pure white, we'll take this hue, but we'll make it really light and quite desaturated, like right over there. So we'll add that to our color swatches. And now we're going to create the menu. All right. So we're going to have like a category and then sub menu underneath it. And we're going to have like four or five columns of those. So category, category, I said, oh, what are you doing? You keep on not typing the zero. I thought I did. Maybe my keyboard sucks. All right. So for the color, we're going to use this color over here because we want to be consistent with our color th scheme. Also, uh, when it comes to your full screen background color, it should differentiate quite a bit from the background from wherever this person clicked from. That way they can clearly see something happened and changed. Uh, we're gonna have our bold right here, and then we're gonna have our sub links underneath it. So alt, shift, drag down, and we need to create a visual hierarchy between these two pieces of information. Because if you did something like this and you had your links underneath, and then you, then you can't, really can't tell the difference, right? So we need to mind good UI design fundamentals. We're gonna make a black color. We're gonna make it a font weight of normal. So that's a second change. We're gonna make a third change, which is gonna be the font size. So right around 23, and I'm just gonna put, put a link to a page here. 
All right, so now that's pretty, you know, these contrast a lot in three different ways. So repeat the grid, and then now it looks pretty decent. But because I do want to show what it looks like when we have hovers over this, we're not going to repeat the grid yet. We're going to come in, just push this over a little bit because we're going to have a button container when you hover over it, maybe out to like here, get rid of that annoying border that Adobe insists on keeping added on every element you create. I wish they would stop doing that. Um, and we'll put that right there. Good white space, left, top, right. And you could leave it white, um, but I'm going to choose to use this background color and then just make it slightly darker. Awesome stuff. So now we'll go ahead and add that to the color swatches as well. And we're going to revert back to this color <coughs> because we're going to <clears throat> select both of these, right click, make a component. That's the default state. We're going to add a hover state right here. And then we double click into it and change it to this color. All right, so now we take uh, this, make it go back to the default state. And just to show you that that works for the hover, we select the artboard, hit play, hover over it, yay, it works. <laughs> All right, uh, now we're gonna take the repeat grid, we're gonna drop this, drag this down to around five or so, and then make sure that's aligned up. My annoying dog outside is barking because he wants in and nobody's letting him in. Now we're gonna repeat the grid Push it out to the right. Maybe we'll just show four, but when we get to the front end development portion, we'll probably show five and also two, two different um, rows of them as well. Now, one last final UI design thing. We need a way to let people get outside of your navigation. So we're going to take the line tool, hold shift, drag out, hold another one, shift, drag out, use your um, alignment arrows and all that stuff to make sure things are symmetrical. Make that big and beefy so people can click on it. And there we go. So we'll take both of those elements, hold shift, select them both, hit control G to group them. All right, so now people have a way to get out of your snazzy navigation. So now um, do any final adjustments for the alignment and you're good and ready to rock. Okay, so now I wanna create an animation where kind of like this circular thing comes up from the center, out from the center uh, of the button and it reveals this. So in order to do that, we first come over here and take the uh, ellipse tool, get into the center, hold shift, alt, create just a tiny little circle without that annoying border, and then take uh, the color, make sure it's this color, and then take the opacity down all the way. All right, so from there, we go ahead and copy that, select this artboard, paste it, and then make this really big. We can't see it yet, so we take the opacity up, to 100% and make sure it just extends outside of uh, the four corners here of this um, element. So then temporarily, um, we're you know, not temporarily, we're gonna drop this beneath those two elements. Um, and then we're gonna take this, we're gonna push it up a little bit and then take the opacity down. We take this artboard, control D to duplicate it. And then we take this and we make the we, we show it again with the opacity and then bring it back right back down to where it was. Now we can go ahead and prototype this, which is really simple. We take our button, drag it over there, make sure it for type it's auto animate and the duration's point uh, uh, we could do 0.5 seconds. We take this, the artboard, drag it over to the next artboard, but make this a time animation with a delay of zero and 0.5 seconds. So now if we hit play it will work because I've done this a million times. And there we go. Look at that. Now it's actually gonna be cooler when we get to the, the portion where um, we're in GSAP and we're in front end development and we can make each of these columns fall in sequentially. And I'll show you how to do that in two days when I release that video. Now I do wanna take this element right here, this artboard, replicate that. We're gonna take this close button, push it over here and that's at 0.5 seconds, I uh, tap auto animate, that's good. Take this artboard, connect it to that one and just make this at 0.3 seconds. And now we'll be able to reverse the animation. So hit play, launch it, click this, reverse, yes. All right, so now those of you might be wondering how do we take this and make this like a, a mobile um, you know, variation of this? Well, we go to design, we all click to replicate it. We're gonna push this all the way over here. Take the artboard, drag it over here. Maybe, maybe around there is pretty good. That's at 434 pixels for the width. Now we have some cleanup to do though. If we select in this artboard, uh, 
we have to get this guy over here, which is the, um, the ellipse. And then we're gonna take this one, Alt, and that will duplicate it. And then we have to take what, that 434, this one needs to be 434 as well. And then we'll go ahead and take the big old uh, sphere and center it. We can scale that down as well. Temporarily, we're gonna hide the thing, so hide that. Take this over here. We can take both of these. Actually, no, we can't. I'm just gonna take this first and then this, drag that over here. Then we're going to show this temporarily, bring it right here about wherever it would make sense, get rid of these columns, but drag down a few more rows of these. And that looks pretty good. We'll come up a little bit higher than we normally would. And then we're going to hide it. And then we're also going to bring this back, uh, the big sphere. Then duplicate this. And then we go ahead and bring this back, opacity and down. Finally, we'll take this, replicate that, take this artboard, uh, or not this artboard, but the X button. Um, and then now we're gonna, we could start prototyping this. So prototype, bring that over, tap 0.5. This one will be a timed animation. So time, and we're just replicating what we did above, by the way. And then this over here, it's a tap, and then we take this over here. That's a time. All right, let's see if it works. So we hit play, select that, get out of there, and there we go. Now we have our mobile and desktop prototypes of our full screen navigation, which will then be fully realized uh, in the browser and uh, different devices, mobile devices, when we get it to the front end dev portion in two days. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. In two days, I'm going to be releasing the second part of this video series on full screen navigations where we take the prototype we just created and we make it into a reality in the browser and on mobile devices because it will be responsive. And we're going to be doing that with HTML, CSS, and GSAP, which is the Greensock animation platform for all the animations. All right, so if you enjoyed this, as always, make sure to subscribe. Check out designcourse.com to enter your email to be notified when it releases. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.